afternoon, everybody. It's Irene from the Penitentiary Public Library. So we have the pleasure of addressing the Penitentiary Horticultural Society this month. Horticultural societies are also known as garden clubs, and fellow gardeners get together to share ideas, socialize, and they usually beautify their city's green spaces. We were presenting information regarding our seed library, and we wanted to share that information with you. So remember back to March 2020 when COVID arrived, and Ontario went into a state of emergency and lockdowns. So many people were at home and decided to grow their own food and start gardening. Whether it was flowers or food, you could not find or purchase seeds for love or money. Victory Gardens were vegetable plots which were planted across Canada during the Second World War. Citizens were encouraged to grow their own food. They provided a window into ways that Canadians could be patriotic citizens on the home front. They also occurred during the First World War, however, there's not a lot of research from that time period. Victory Gardens were wildly promoted and were commonly known as war gardening. War gardening, the basic idea behind it was that the more produce that could be grown by Canadians in their front yards, vacant lots, and former flower beds, the more food and soldiers and munitions could be shipped to Canada's allies overseas. Also, if you grew your own food, it freed up the rail cars and transport trucks to move strategic goods instead of food. Victory Gardens were also part of a healthy diet according to Canada's official food rules, which was the precursor to Canada's food guide. Growing your own vegetables, it combats issues of food security, sustainable living, maintains healthy ecosystems. People who experience food insecurity often consume a nutrient-poor diet. Not enough or no fresh fruits and vegetables. They might not have access to enough healthy foods. Growing a vegetable garden improves your health. Consuming more fresh fruits and vegetables is one of the most important things you can do to stay healthy. It saves money on groceries. You get free outdoor exercise. Gardening is a natural stress reliever. Being outside in fresh air and sunshine can improve your mood. Even if you don't have a yard, you could consider a patio garden or container gardening or raised beds. You would be amazed at how many vegetables you can grow in one pot. When you pick vegetables right from the garden, the vitamin content will be at its highest. You also reduce the risk of eating vegetables with harmful chemicals. You know exactly what you're eating because you fertilized your vegetables. You can also grow organic vegetables for a fraction of the cost in the stores. We say at the library, start a child reading early with frequent trips to the bibliotheque. Then you'll have a reader for life. The same goes for gardening. Start children gardening early and you'll have a gardener for life. Also, getting kids involved will make it more likely for them to try vegetables. Studies show children who are fed with homegrown vegetables are twice as likely to eat five servings of fruit and vegetables per day compared to children who rarely or never ate homegrown veggies. Kids are not great fans of greens, so once again, starting them young will get them to eat veggies early. Our library hosted two very successful programs last summer. It was targeted towards children, however, entire families and adults also became involved. The first was a sunflower growing competition. We supplied the seeds, mammoth sunflower seeds, which can produce sunflower plants up to 14 feet tall, and growing instructions. The participants then sent in photos to our email or Facebook pages showing their sunflowers growing. 
The winner of the competition was spectacular. Sunflowers well over 14 feet tall. We at the library also participated unsuccessfully. The squirrels got our plants shortly after they went into the ground. Our second program last summer was a pumpkin growing competition. The premise being, grow your own pumpkin and decorate or carve it for Halloween. Again, a great success, and this way the children who participated could monitor the progress of their pumpkins. The library submission was more successful than our sunflower. I've never grown a pumpkin prior to this, so we had a beautiful large leaves and watered the plant daily, no pumpkin. It took our next door neighbor at the library to point out to us that we had a magnificent pumpkin hiding in plain sight perfectly camouflaged under the leaves. With these programs, we try to encourage young gardeners. So a seed library, in simple terms, we loan seeds to gardeners at planting time. At the end of the growing season, the gardeners save some seeds from their gardens and return the seeds to the library. Penetanguishing Public Library launched our first seed library in 2016. It was going gangbusters until COVID hit, and the library stopped taking donations of any kind, so no donations in over two years, which is why we were reaching out to you and previously in this speech, the Horticultural Society. We were asking their members to think of us in the summer and fall, which is optimum seed saving time, and to ask people to donate seeds to the library. We suggest classifications such as super easy, easy, and difficult. This helps encourage beginner novice gardeners. Categories such as flower, vegetables, and herbs. Categories such as perennials and annuals. And classifications such as heirloom and native. Information is great. Details are better. One year, a member of our library thought she was growing a row of cucumbers from seeds she obtained from us. She grew an entire row of melons instead. So it's basically borrow, grow, return. Seeds should not be old. They should, not be, uh, they should be dry, clean, and labeled. Place seeds in a paper envelope or container so they can breathe. Never store seeds in plastic baggies or airtight containers. Moisture that is trapped will cause the seeds to become moldy. As it is with all of our library programming, you must have a valid library card to borrow seeds. I know I've talked mainly about vegetable seeds. Um, obviously, there's a demand for flower seeds, and it's always fun to try some new flowers in our gardens. We found that while our seed library was in operation, vegetable seeds would fly off the shelf. There was a huge demand for them. We had difficulty keeping up with the demands for vegetable seeds. My personal passion is growing tomatoes. There's nothing more satisfying than going to the vegetable garden in August, picking an onion from the soil, uh, plucking cucumbers from the vine and tomatoes hop off the vine with fresh basil. Add olive oil, fleur de sel and pepper and I can smell and taste summer right now. Um, I've started close to 60 tomato plants this spring. I always get carried away. I never plant basic red tomatoes. You can get those locally at farmer's market. I plant exotics and heirlooms. Green Zebra, Fuzzy Peach, Bloody Butcher, White Ghost, Black Indigo, Crim, Lemon Boy, and Currant. Right now they're vibrating in my greenhouse, and yes, I will be saving my tomato seeds this summer. Thank you so much uh, for listening. Keep us in mind later in the season uh, to save and donate some seeds. Have a great day. Bye.